deserves. It's not just the words. Some of y'all heads up in the cloud. I'ma bring y'all back to earth. It's black back to burn. Bullshit y'all talking about. Out your mouth, I'm not concerned. Cause y'all got to learn. As y'all turn like Detroit Red. When his head had an ultra perk. The long walk, I burn your bare heels. So throw on your boots. The game camouflage like army suits. But I can see it more clear. Cause I came with the coupe in here. Ring the alarm and form the truth. Send them out into the world. Go to war on the flu. Out of eye with the enemy. You sworn to shoot. Now I'm coming at your neck. Sick of hearing something wrong with me. Motherfucker, something wrong with you. When the cheek just way too smart to question. The enemy, the brothers of a dark complexion. The government to the world is shark infested. They have the own weaponry like Shark and Heston, man. Look, it gets low here. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Forces of Darkness have won in Cambridge. Out of the Blue Gallery is officially closed now. Places in shambles. Shell of its former self. The neighborhood is being gentrified. It will inevitably, apparently, become an incredibly boring place where people can't have cool community events, where people can't do cool concerts, uh, new musicians can't play, uh, new artists can't hang their art, um, people can't get together, people can't sit down and read a book in a nice, interesting place that's a little bit out of the ordinary. Nobody can make anything that doesn't fit into the grid, and that's, that's I guess, where we're going. That's, that's how the cycle happens, you know, in a way. Um, I don't know. Does gentrification use artists to turn neighborhoods into more profitable places when the out of the blue moved in things were still a little bit sketchy in Central Square but I guess times have changed over the last three years and places something of a cash cow now so I don't know how you doing her I'm doing bad yeah yeah that's a, that's a big shame dude that uh, the out of the blue is actually closed and Central Square is gonna get crappier that Landlord is gonna keep making his money, but you know, yeah, a cool place that 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 they you know, it was a cheap venue, uh, art gallery. Just a very you know, I thought that out of the blue was like so so unique and cool, and now it's gone. Yeah, you don't really see places like that ever. Um, for anybody who's never been to the Out of the Blue Gallery, um, which is now closing down, it was a place where a lot of different things happened. There were, it was a very accessible place for people to do performances, for people to do music. People could go in and, and feel, you know, if you spent some time working there, volunteering there at the space, you felt like you could have a little bit of control over it, that, that you could uh, determine the place's destiny to a degree um, for a while. There was a librarian that was built in there, a small uh, library space uh, that somebody put together. Somebody made a room that was... Uh, had black lights in it and mirrors and interesting black light sensitive artwork. Oh yeah, that was cool. Uh, that was a thing for a little while. Uh, it was just really a community hub for a long time, and it, of course it was not without its problems. Um, you know, you, you get a lot of peculiar people who tend to show up at such places, and sometimes they've got mental illnesses and they've got their own problems that they bring to the table. But. <laughs> The landlord for a little while provided a fair deal on the rent, or, a, you know, an affordable deal on the rent. It was in what used to be a blockbuster video, you know, kind of a rinky-dink building, not in the best shape or anything like that. Um, but for a while, it was a place where, you know, a lot of, you know, unexpected things could happen. To me, it just revealed that if we were somehow to live in a world where things like that were subsidized or like just a world in which there was space for that kind of thing to happen and people didn't have to constantly be stressed out about rent like you can make a lot of cool things happen you know what i mean but um but then things changed and i guess i guess a guy who owns millions of dollars in property decided he wanted to make as much money as he could off of them and that's it's pretty standard that's just i mean that's how our system works so you know, that's that's what people who are in that position do. And as a result, uh, things become a lot more boring and people lose opportunities to. Yeah, but, you know, no, things, it's so. all right, guys. Don't worry, because, you know, rich people are still going to get rich. That's true. Yeah, they're going to, you know, 
be able to buy another house. So yeah, yeah there you go. They, Maybe an extra you know, car. A couple of more houses. A couple of more. Lamborghini. It's like bullshit. It's like bullshit that like you know like like how uh, like like those eighties movies when like a community would come together to save their uh, the little. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like the the like uh, uh I don't know, shit, key shack or, or the, yeah, yeah, community center yeah, or something, yeah. dude. Like holy god, dude, that never happened, dude. We never got it together and saved it, dude. Yeah. And actually, the community came and attacked it a couple of years ago. Yeah. And made it worse. It actually helped it helped it help it like uh, uh uh fall apart even faster, dude. Yeah. A community of fucking ill-informed social justice fucking idiots decided to attack the blue. And, 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 and keep attacking it even though they, they weren't like informed to what was going on dude yeah. and i blame a lot of a lot of the blues downfall on that yeah i mean and for anybody who's listening who isn't aware of that whole situation there was an incident in which uh, essentially one of the volunteer managers there was accused of kissing someone against her will and in a blog post and in response uh, tom the guy who is you know the founder of the gallery asked that person to leave you know right after that um However, the place was like demonized by a group of people who, you know, insisted it was not a safe place, not a safe space. I don't know. It just, yeah, it doesn't seem like these people were interested in ever getting to, they didn't seem, I mean, it, it just seems to me to be, it's destructive moralizing. You know, they don't care about the truth. They don't care about what really happened. They don't care about actually trying to uphold some kind of real justice. They care about making themselves look like they're on the right side, and no then, matter what the consequences of that are. Oh yeah. Fuck the consequences. Yeah. Or, or maybe they're just stupid and they just don't understand what the consequences of their own actions are, you know, because essentially what happens is the place was stigmatized. And, you know, it's not to say that that whole incident is the root of everything that went wrong there, uh, but, but it was a big part of it. I it mean, was it started a spiral that caused the place to go into more and more debt. Um, you know, I mean, the place was very stigmatized for quite a while. Um, most of the shows were pulled at that time. So the rent, you know, that was the only way that they were going to be able to make the, you know, 10 grand rent. I think the landlord was actually asking for more than that at one point in time. But that was the only way they were going to make that rent was if they had music shows happening every night, plus vendors who rented out booths for their, you know, small businesses, you know, the people selling African gift items, the people who had booths for their art, uh, the people who were, you know, selling antiques, the people who were, you know, the Ethiopian women who were selling coffee. All of that, but, you know, then if you take out, you know, 40% of the rent by canceling all of the shows, more or less because it's, you know, because it was stigmatized or demonized, well, that that certainly starts you down the path toward not being able to sustain an operation like that. But, here, let's, uh, let's listen to this video that I made about the Out of the Blue Gallery a few years ago when... Uh, this was before all of that, but it was already having a little bit of difficulty. This is right when the the rent first got raised from I think thirty five hundred to ten thousand. Um, so the goal at this point was to um, bring in some money on Kickstarter and to uh, get nonprofit status, which the gallery eventually did. And unfortunately, I think that there was no one there who really you know knew how to navigate being a nonprofit, who knew about the process who was good at the process of, of writing grants, of, of, you know, finding donors, of finding ways to use that to the advantage of the gallery. But let, let's check out this video. Well, hi, I'm uh, Tom Tipton, and uh, I'm the founder of Out of the Blue Gallery. Didn't exactly intend that, but that's what happened. the Blue Gallery is a place where the arts come together. Music, uh, paintings, photography, poets, dancers, art in a big word. And it's been like that for nearly 20 years. Art, creativity, gives new life. This is a safe place for a lot of people. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world that's really um, heavy. And I feel like this is like light. Dozens and dozens of people come in through here a day just to look around 
feel like most of the art that we hang, the artist doesn't expect to make a ton of money selling it. They just are expressing themselves, and it's great that people get to see it. Without this place, they wouldn't. Yeah, we started out originally um, down on Brooklight Street, about a 10 to 15 minute walk down from Mass Ave. I had started hanging some artwork, some friends' art, in Brookline Lunch, and the owner of that place had a little storefront down there and asked if we wanted to rent it. It was kind of fun, and we saw something that uh, people seemed to pick up on. Mostly it was the mixture of all the different disciplines of art being in one room. After about five years, we moved over to Prospect Street. We were there for just a little over 15 years, and we've been now in our new location here on Mass Ave for uh, about six months, and it's pretty fantastic. We went from 500 square feet to almost 6,000, uh, a bit overwhelming, and by rights we shouldn't be here, but we are, and we're going to do our best to stay here. This is totally different. People walk in here shopping, and it, it, shopping doesn't always mean they're buying something, but they're shopping. It's kind of fantastic. Uh, everybody comes in here. Every, all ages, all manner of people, and they all enjoy it. It's just something a little bit different and uh, a little bit more human than they're used to running into. People pick up on that right away. People feel comfortable here. People, uh, musicians playing, they really like it. It's not really a stage, but it is. There's something about it they like. It's intimate, it's, it's, it's casual. You know, at any given moment, there's probably 60, 70, 80 artists having work in here. We try to give everybody an opportunity to, to get their work up in front of people and make it as simple and easy as affordable as possible. Many of our artists, it's the first time that they've been able to get their work up in front of the public. The dogs are a very great attraction. There are people that come in here just to see the animals. Well, the librarium is a really odd little feature. Uh, there's no reason for it to be there. It's a bunch of cool books. People come in, they sit down, they start reading a book. They hang out there for a while and uh, they just enjoy it. It's like this, this odd little space where nothing needs to happen. Well, the spaceship in the back, that's uh, quite interesting. <laughs> Many people go into the spaceship in the back and they come out with a big smile on their face. Well, we don't get paid anything. <laughs> There's just not enough money to do that. We do it because we believe in it. It's really about the people. All of the people that come here, all of the people that contribute to the artwork that's here. It's, I've always said that, it's really all about the people. Art's just the best damn excuse. That uniqueness that it carries in each of us. There's so many people that believe in this place and are contributing to keeping it here and making it happen. And that's incredible. It's important for a place like this to exist. Everything is so cookie-cuttered, high-rised, packaged and barcoded. People come in here, that changes. It's a lot of work. Art and money don't seem to go together. We're somehow managing to get it nearby each other, working on keeping it getting closer. It takes a uh, community to support this. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's right. It does take a community to support it. And I don't know. You know, it's hard to, in the face of just the way things change as a neighborhood gentrifies, it's really hard to keep a community together that can support something like that. You know, I guess it's complicated. You know, there were problems between people behind the scenes at the Out of the Blue Gallery. You know, it wasn't only the rent situation but that that sure seems like the primary the primary problem which is just that it's incredibly expensive to exist in a place in a city like cambridge now so i don't know yeah oh 
Rest in peace. Yeah, I guess. Hopefully it pops back up. Yeah, and I mean, there are, you know, they're, they're, those guys are working on plans to try to get it to pop back up elsewhere. It's just that it, it may not be near the heart of the city, so to speak. But then again, I mean, if, you know, if this is the trend that Boston and Cambridge are on, where just all of the art gets kicked out and anything off the beaten path or out of the ordinary gets kind of pushed out, then maybe it's not, you know, maybe it's not the heart of anything anymore, aside from, you know, I don't know, tech jobs and universities and, you know. Yeah, and retails. And retail stores, yeah. How long until EMF goes, dude? How long until this fucking building goes, dude? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just seems, yeah, it just seems like economic forces are kind of closing in on all sides in this area. Like, bands are not going to have places to, yeah, bands aren't yeah. going to have places to go, like, practice in, dude. Like, goddamn, you're going to have to move to Lowell or fucking Brockton to find an artist, an artist space. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Like, but you know, Maddie was telling me yesterday that she knows somebody who, um, goes to community college, um, at, at Mass Bay Community College who just commutes from Worcester, you know? I think that's, that's like an hour or something. Yeah. This person gets up at five in the morning. I don't know. That's just, the thing is that that's the reality for a lot of people in this country. And like maybe the divide is more extreme here than it is other places. But it's almost like the way that this system of gentrification works, it just kind of pushes those people who are the have nots farther away uh, in such a way that, um, you know, if, if, you're, if you're in the center of things, you just don't see them. You know? We've got another guest uh, stepping into the studio right now. A surprise guest here. What 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 mic is that, Herb? That is three. Mic number three. Mic number three initiating. Here we go. We have the host of WEMF's Killing Them with Kyleness. Yeah, show that. Kyle. I mean, we got a good response on the first episode. <laughs> yeah? How did it go? Oh, you kidding me? But thank you. I know you begged me to be here. I got a couple minutes to spare. What were we talking <laughs> we about? Movies or movies? We were talking about, I mean, we was, you know, it was a bit of a downer. We were talking about Out of the Blue. We were talking Ooh. about the, the fact that Out of the Blue went down, the rising rents in the area, the fact that it's so hard to do something interesting like that. And did you that talk about the out. going into the ceiling yet? No, we didn't talk about that, but I guess... Uh, I'm still not 100% clear guess, why you were in the ceiling. I don't know if it would kill us if we did. I'm to talk like Steve all um, of a sudden, just I, being in his orbit. I was uh, I was out of the building when that happened. What happened? Yeah, I heard you left. Things got good after you left. I saw that. Of course, it like, was a sad night. Oh, the fun train came right when you were out the door. I'm surprised you didn't see it. <laughs> Passing well, you. If we're speaking purely hypothetically about something that may or may not have happened last night... Oh, we're not allowed to talk Let me that. simply say... It's not that, legal to uh, be in ceilings. <laughs> that uh, within the ceiling of the Out of the Blue Gallery, there is a space that is about five or six feet tall. Oh, wow. Um, and <laughs> space. using a ladder, it is possible for one to climb up into the ceiling and get onto the rafters and witness the very old light fixtures up there oh. that look like they're about 70 years old. Really? And the interesting panels on the ceiling. I mean, it's mostly it's very dirty up there, you know? That's part of the reason why it's, you know, it's like... Was this maybe that's part of the reason Out of the Blue is allowed to be there at all. Is it's like kind of a junky old building, you know? It's like you go up in the ceiling, it's that's full of all this I... dust and junk and <laughs> dirt and piles of Now, is that something refuse. you've always wanted to do, or have you done it before? I mean, if you did it, had you, would you have, have you have done it in the past if you did do what you think you did do? <laughs> well, Not that you did it. the first rule of Clubhouse Club, of course, is you don't talk about Clubhouse Club. That's a yes, uh, you've done it before. <laughs> but I did dream for a while of ascending into the altar realm above the uh, out of the blue gallery yeah. in the ceiling. Just to I like the see outfit what it was you had to wear. Like that was there. great. Yeah, yeah. I, we uh, we had to put on some protective gear, including ponchos, um, safety goggles from the 1980s. The goggles do nothing. Uh, well, that's when they made them good back. Yeah, they made the good plastic ones back in those days, and they had a, they had just a nice, distinct look to them at that time. I think. You should take them. And with. also a bandana, because yeah. I'm not sure what's in that yeah. ceiling. You look yeah. very cool. I didn't want to breathe it too much, whatever it was. <laughs> a modern day superhero. When I was watching it happen, I thought it was like one of those things where like something needed to be done, some handiwork, and you know those things where like men are like, "Let me, I'll do it, I'll." But like it probably didn't need to be done, and I was just thinking, look at Steve trying to look important going up there. But I didn't know it was just to see an amazing fixture in there. Yeah, 
I thought maybe there was like... Oh. Holy shit, you look mad emo. Ah! Sorry. Oh, it's yeah. true, he does look a little bit emo today. But, <laughs> it could wait, be wait. the closure of the Out of the Blue Gallery. Yeah, it must be. Yes, Kyle's that. hair in a very emotional wait, wait. mood. There we go. <laughs> That's... Always keep one eye covered. What's going on? It's <laughs> I look like Marilyn Manson. I don't know, I'm not really trying to shock people. But I don't know, how are you doing today, image. Kyle, with your hair that is shocking all of us? Uh, well, you know, I mean... I just present myself in a way that I think is how I want to express myself. It's not really to shock or offend anybody, but, you know, it's just, you know, it's, hair comes out dead, so why not, you know, mold it to maybe you want it to be, you know, whatever, it's just, you know, that's fashion for you. Herb. Beautiful. Herb, how you doing with your two hats? It's an interesting take. <laughs> As always. Yeah, we got some interesting headgear in the studio here today. We got emo hair, we got double hats. Pony tail. Just how roll around here. Ponytail, of course. We'll grow back. Usual. We'll grow back. Oh, people want that song. That so song's that, getting ready for Have you played it today? No, no. We don't joke around on Steve Neal. Okay. <laughs> Gotta remember, this is not. So, wait, wait, can you do. I mean, can you. Um, can you give us a, an a cappella um, version? Well, maybe if Herb would song? join me. I mean, I'm, I'm down to join you. But I think it goes something like, okay. It'll right. grow back. It'll grow back. It'll grow back. It'll grow back. There was like some more like there. Uh, I forgot, yeah. <laughs> we'll cut that up. We'll have that ready for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's ready for tomorrow. You'll see. You guys got to get in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> well, the soundtrack's out there. It's going to be it's gonna be the, the number one uh, club banger. You'll see. You club banger. Okay. Yeah. Not. So, did you? Are you gonna paint over our destructive? Mm, no, uh, Tom people? told me I, I don't need to tonight, so oh. he's gonna get somebody else to do it some it, other time. I like when you said it wasn't right. Like, what was it? Not. You didn't say appropriate behavior. Not correct behavior. Oh yeah. yes, that's right. There was also there was some some last minute artwork made on the walls of the Out of the Blue Gallery last well, night. Last minute, maybe last four hours. Last, <laughs> last four right. hours of uh, the Out of the Blue Gallery featured uh, some art being put on the walls, True. and there has been uh, it's been a lot of uh, disagreement about whether it should have been put there or not. Controversy. I know first it was Frank just yeah. letting us do one section, and then I saw like other people over there, and then I'm like, well, oh he's God. not saying anything. And then when we're going all the way to like the front, <laughs> Frank's just going around just talking with doing thumbs up. Every time I'd see him, he, he wouldn't talk. He just gave me a thumbs up. Everybody joined in. Dude. And then, yeah, <laughs> then he gave then he gave us some paint. Yeah, well, I mean, really it was a lot of fun. Paint involved. Uh, uh, I. Uh, when I left, when I left, it was only markers. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That's so herb. That's all about so herb. Yeah. But I guess why not do a little bit of last minute art in an art gallery? You know, we're yeah. gonna repaint those walls anyway. What's it gonna? I know be? not everyone agrees with that. But he was really, he was really angry when he called me this morning. Do an impression uh, of it. So no, you. you okay, I'll be herb. Hello. I'm not doing an impression. He probably went. <laughs> That's not correct behavior. <laughs> I, I wanted to sneak in his laugh, but he, he wouldn't laugh at that scenario. But I like his wheezing laugh. Yeah, he. Uh, Hope he's not listening. He was kind of upset, but whatever. Yeah. You know? I want to see. I want to see what it looks like, though. Yep. That was like a, that was like a whole community coming together to paint a couple of walls. What it was all about? What we were building towards. What's it gonna be now? Yeah, that was kind of the closest thing to community building that's happened there in a while. I know they I feel should like in a real sort of way. I don't know. We we did have that that little impromptu game with the balloon once, and that was pretty fun. Oh, tell me about this. That. Is oh. true. Yeah, we. Uh, who who began the game? You? Mm, Herb? Maybe uh, I think it was Napoleon or something. This there was some balloons. Building game? There were yeah. in a way it was a sort of impromptu team building game, but there were extra balloons after a show. Uh, after a music show, and I don't know, we just we're just passing them back and forth. And yeah, we just pass it back <laughs> and, and forth. It's very therapeutic. It's very beautiful. You know, it's kind of yeah, sad dude. because we knew the place was going to die soon. Yeah, this was, was recent. Yeah, That's dude, a few you know, days ago. Yeah, no, I feel so like it's cool. been dying for 
Dude, all the lights were off, and like real, everybody should stop talking, and we all just play with the balloon for like <laughs> several oh. minutes, man. It was like beautiful, man. Someone was filming that. Oh, I wish, man. Oh, no, sadly, I was not. It was sadly it was, my gear was not with me. I really wanted to be filming it though, because I thought dude, it was beautiful. Moment. I love it. It was too organic to be filmed, dude. That moment will live on in legend. That's true. You can't. And then we can exaggerate and make everything. it more amazing than yeah, it really yeah. was. <laughs> I really liked your out of the out of the blues blue. Oh yeah. Even though that it wasn't quite kind-hearted woman like that guy wanted, but oh god, and we don't know what key it was in. <laughs> I like when he's playing. He's like, "What do you want me to play? F? Okay." Then he starts playing. I'm playing F. Okay. I'm playing F right now. <laughs> and you're like, "Yeah, no, that's great. This is an F." <laughs> what do you want me to play now? Right <laughs> after he like... chooses, he's still mad at you. I'm going to B. <laughs> this is a. She's a kind heart. Oh, listen to me. Oh, Kyle is uh, Kyle's talking about a particular character who comes into the outer <laughs> blue fairly frequently. She's a kind and... hearted woman. But oh, man, that was like wait, the worst. That was the worst. Man, she wants uh, to kill me and keep me in her mind. The, the character that Kyle's talking about is a, can be a rather dark, nihilistic <laughs> drunk. Uh, yeah. Is the way can that he be, is I think he is. Yeah, he's not always drunk. He's actually a. He's a pretty intelligent person in a lot of ways. Yeah, he is a good when he's good drunk, problem. he just gets incoherent and. Dark and yet, he, he's the one we've talked mean. about who has a problem with your clothing choice. That's true. Yeah, you know, it looks like you're uh, mixing it up today. Yeah, he's giving me some trouble in the clothing. Yeah, well, I'm wearing the. Um, I ended up wearing home the uh, bandana that Frank gave me to go in the ceiling oh, of the cool. Out of the Blue Gallery. Matches oh. that shirt. Yeah. Do Which we have does. a live nice. stream going? Yeah, no, no, take no, no. our word for it that no, Steve is wearing a different outfit today. <laughs> Give, use your words to describe this outfit All right. in as much poetic detail as you oh, can. Oh, oh, well, that looks like. Oh, God. What do you call that? A sweater, huh? <laughs> I don't know. It's, got, it's many shades of blue. Many. Let's just say blue has never looked so gray. With like an. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, tea is not, um, it's not the most high-maintenance, um, drink. Oh, it's, you got You need hot water. Oh. You need tea. Oh. You mix those things. We don't, we don't have either. <laughs> we got a microwave. Oh, oh, we do. Never Kyle, what do you, what do you think about the, the, the closing of the other uh, Blue Gallery? I know, well, I feel like it's been closing forever. I don't think it's really <laughs> hit me that it's really, really closing. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, there's been this gradual, slow decline. I feel like I only knew about it since like April 2016. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it's for most of the time that you've known about it, it's been kind of falling apart slowly. Yeah, I mean, so everyone loved it for a week, and then all that stuff from like a few weeks into it, and then that it just became this big divisive. Right. But right when I've been there, it's an amazing place. And a few weeks later, fuck that place. <laughs> and but I always liked it. I sold thirty dollars worth of art there. Yeah. You I did? guess I did. Oh, uh, sure. I'm hello. Thirty dollars, not bad. Cha ching But I don't know. I guess when it's like when a lot of the people who are coming to your shows, in fact, or like a lot of people you're trying to appeal to, are like college kids who go to universities that cost thirty or forty thousand dollars a semester, like in there. They're used to like going to college in such a way that they're not even students. They're like customers who are just demanding a nice environment and eating really good food in their you know dormitories. They start to they start to see working people as people who work for them. I think that's how Maddie put it the other night, right? Mm -hmm. And I think they saw the out of the blue gallery in the same way. You know, it's like despite the fact that Tom and many other people were there just volunteering their time yeah. all the time, like basically. Like putting inordinate amounts of work for no money and keeping this place open, or like whatever for enough money to like buy food and cigarettes and to, you know, often not even have a you know real place of their own to live in. Hmm. But nonetheless, the people who like just, just these kids who just know nothing about the place is just like, well, you work for me. You need to make this place better for me. You need to make this safe for me. Even though there was nothing particularly dangerous about the place in the first place. There was one incident where someone was accused of doing something that was wrong. And, well, know, one time I was, was leaving it. it, and this, or maybe, no, I think I was walking by, and this homeless man walked out the back door and just kind of latched onto me, sort of like a monkey, and was sort of humping me. Oh, God. But besides that, 
Well, yeah. There are <laughs> Fab's few, still like, very tagged. Yeah. Couldn't get out of his. Gr- I thought he was like, uh, like first Weird. year, like this is a joke, right? That I God. What was he? What the, the, really? what the what the hell was he? going on? Did you just have to run away? Uh, kind happening? of. I forget what he was. He, he was just kind of. What was he, what was he doing? I don't know. I have a picture. Of, they probably were. I mean, he was wasted. I'm picturing maybe they kicked him out and he just kind of stumbled on. I'm not <laughs> saying it's the gallery's fault. And it was like right after, and I was always in my head, I'm like, it's not that bad a place, it's not that bad a place, and then this guy. <laughs> so he just kind of grabbed us? I think right? he was like asking for money, and okay. I forget, we were kind of like joking, and then when he goes to hug me, I'm like, haha, okay, it's kind of funny, and then like he tightens his grip. I felt like prey. Uh. <laughs> and I think I weaseled my way out of there. Yeah. Oh, man. That's that's more of Central Square like yeah. Yeah. weirdos, you know. But I mean, that's that's a symptom of the same problem, which is just the place is becoming too expensive for people to live in. So you have a bunch of like, yeah, homeless people who are very a, fucked up in the game. Yeah, my mom used to have those chocolate shop oh, houses. They would just let anybody in. It was an air, which is right next to the town of Harvard, which is this very rich, well-to-do town. And then one town over is air, homeless people everywhere, and. They would let in all all the crazies, and it would just kind of became like a shelter for them. They'd be just sitting at the tables, and my mom was like so nice. She'd give them rides to places and stuff like that, and they were just letting everybody in. Yeah, there was this guy named Eddie. Well, and I mean, to the Out of the Blue's credit, though, the Out of the Blue did like there were a few people who were really like annoying drunks who had to kind of be kicked out and a few people who just did the weirdest crazy things weird because like, there's no alcohol like the guy who tried to move into the basement secretly that's a whole other story <laughs> what? I, wanted, um, I didn't even know about the basement till last night I've been telling everyone about how awesome it was allegedly. well there was a guy who probably tried to move into the basement I think um, or it's it seems so like he just sneaks down there when no one's looking and then hopes no one checks well, he, in on. He him. was a very strange guy and I, 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 he seemed to be mentally ill in some way. I'm not gonna name him, um, but he used to come around and kind of talk people's ears off and like he just kind of ramble. And I remember the first time I talked to him, he was using like a lot of like like interesting out of the ordinary vocabulary, and I was like, wait, is this like a really interesting poetic smart guy? That's how they always. But then get I, you. but then I listened to him for a while, and I was like, wait a second, no, this is nonsense. Everything he's saying, none of this makes any that's sense. Like, what he's saying right now, <laughs> talking about cube farms. And that's all. I feel like that's because I've been reading a lot about our savior Charles Manson. Like I feel like that's kind of how they rope you in. If you don't yeah, think about yeah. it too the, much, yeah, you're Manson like, is a little bit like that. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. So then he found his way, <laughs> maybe allegedly found his way into the well, basement. He, um, so he was hanging around, and I think people kind of tried to tell him to not come back because he was like annoying people a lot. And then I think eventually um, TJ, this was back when TJ was around there, um, was showing somebody a space in the basement because they were going to like maybe rent out some <clears throat> space for somebody to store things in the basement or something like that. Right. And like this was at the end of the night. And I guess they went down into the basement and Who went around a corner, find? and then this guy was there, and he like backed up against the the wall. <laughs> he's like, How long have you been he's here? He's like, ah, oh, you caught me, and like he had been, <laughs> was this he, he had been like, yeah, I mean, it was ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know. Me. He had been like leaving, you know, he had been leaving some of his stuff down there. So we so know I'm pretty sure he really was, names, but we think he's a Russian. <laughs> I, yeah, well, I'm I'm not gonna say you know You've I won't say me. whether he was Russian or not. He might have been. <laughs> he um, was in a rush that night. But yeah, it, <laughs> you know, I'm talking about. It sounds like he was really trying to do that. And I don't know. Then I think he came back one more time. I think. Well, I think that I I was closing the place once, right? And I had to like kind of kick that guy out because he wouldn't leave. Like I was like, oh, we're closing. We gotta close in ten minutes. People and are then, like, too nice. Half an hour later, he's still there. And I'm like, hey, we're actually closing. <laughs> I can't picture you, you like leave. I had to get putting kinda, your foot down. I, like, yeah, I kind of had to because like otherwise I'd be there all night. Oh, just waiting for this guy. He was waiting for <laughs> to you to like out of there, you know. Dude, he was waiting for you to not pay attention so he could sneak down to the basement again. Maybe, maybe. I think this might have been before that, but maybe he was already do- trying to do it. Or maybe he was doing it. I, I really don't know. Well, but, hey, you can go now. But places like that, do they draw out some weird characters. I mean, that's that's for sure. That's always the double-edged sword, you know? Like, it's such a yeah. cool place where, like, interesting, cool things can happen, but then also, like, it sometimes you so just get long. some mentally ill people who come in and so what know, make is it hard. the future? Too accepting, anyway. What is the future? Yes. For out for ooh, ooh, O-O-T-B, as Tyrone would say. I don't know. 
I mean, there's talk of uh, the Out of the Blue moving to a place in Malden, I guess. Hmm. Uh, it doesn't sound like anything has been decided for certain yet. And what will be there now? At the new Out of the Blue? At where the... I mean, the place where it is not now. Oh, you're yeah. talking about the, the blockbuster. 551 yeah. or whatever. We don't know. I don't think anyone knows. They're going to mm-hmm. tear it down and put up an apartment building. Oh, dude. that I'm should be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we can look well, at Well, but the... is it in the same building as Boomerangs? Or are those separate structures? Boomerangs is um, a thrift shop. Some more nice, boomerangs. nice little thrift shop next door. I think it's the same building, though. Interesting. So they're going to drive Boomerangs out, too? Yeah, no. That's nah, what you Because Boomerangs is a cool place. I just fucking around. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what's going on there. I guess we're gonna find out eventually, maybe. It's not the blue, so I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like a, a hurt child. How I don't can care we, anymore. How can I am, we? I am, um, I am a little hurt, dude. It's too bad that we don't like. We really. It'd be so nice if there was community activism around preventing this kind of thing from happening, or around trying to create a new. Because you know there are other countries where it's easier to get like grants and things for this, or. Canada. I don't know. And people have organized to, to make, to sort of uh, put pressure on landlords to make them renegotiate. Well, that's the thing, dude. Uh, the, the, all these little, we gotta get somebody out there to take advantage of these little idiots that like to fucking protest and be social justice warriors, right? And divert we, them towards something that and actually divert makes them sense. To actually, yeah, yeah, we gotta get somebody Enough to Enough of like, human trafficking. Save our gallery, right, Herb? Is that <laughs> yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying, dude. Great. Let's manipulate some of these idiots into doing something I good. I mean, good. Your kid was sold into we sex did, um, slavery. Boo-hoo. Let's get a gallery open over here. Nah, because they're not they're not protesting sla- uh, like like we like come like up with human the idea. trafficking dude they're protesting what? fucking like people like 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 oh I'm sorry <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> like what I'm just saying we came up with the idea of, get Steven uh, Tyler to do like it. what if we what if we had publicized this this uh, story if we pushed this narrative on people saying that Richard Spencer the white nationalist himself was coming to shut down the out of the blue gallery then people might <laughs> oh. give a shit then people might be like no we can't let this happen. Because and then when they find out that's a is fake story, it. they'll be like, "Guy, we hate Steve. <laughs> yeah. Use white nationalism in the name to save his gallery, where you're, they're groping people Maybe, up but and I don't down." Know. And- I don't know if they would have figured that out. Maybe it would have at least complicated. The story. And then the white nationalists will give us all the money. <laughs> 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 It's a good idea. Richard Spencer, the one that got punched in the face. Yeah, he's that guy. He's the one that people who don't pay attention like me kind of know. Yeah, yeah. He's the guy, which is so funny to me. I mean, it's sad, you know. It's like this guy, he's only famous. You know, he brought like 150 people to his conference last year, and then the media just covers it like crazy. And now he's like super well known. And now you've heard of him, you know. It's like you could have just ignored these people. I mean, they're, (laughs) they're dopes. You know what I mean? You, they like leave them marginalized where they are with their silly ideas. Leave them in the gazebo. Yeah. Sure, leave them in the gazebo. What does that mean, the gazebo? Oh, uh, what well, the freedom rally? Remember, it was like a big oh, thing. Oh, right. Yeah. Like we should all be afraid. Like everyone, don't even go to it. It's gonna be dangerous and violent. It turned out there are just I don't know fifty. If you want to call them Nazis in a gazebo. Right, and most of them aren't really even. You know, Nazis. Yeah, and then the rest were just just people going around going, where the Nazis? Vaguely (laughs) right-wing people, it would seem. I don't know. But they do have cute little Hitler haircuts. It's a bit (laughs) Nazi-ish. We can at least admit they have Nazi haircuts. (laughs) Oh, I wasn't there. I didn't see their haircuts. Did they have Nazi haircuts? I mean, Richard Uh, Spencer has a Nazi haircut. Yeah. And he actually does seem to be a racist. You know, that guy. But True. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing. But there's not that many of those people. That's my only point, you know. Don't, don't fool yourself into thinking the world is more threatening than it is. Or focus on the real threats, you know? Focus on the bigger picture. People gotta work together. I think. Yeah! 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 yeah. No, I don't like it. You don't like working? No. Yeah. No. It's fucking wrong. No, indiv- individuality. That's right. Well, I don't know. We gotta finish up our show pretty soon here. And then um, the monsoors at Great Scott tonight at ten. The monsoors. You don't know the mons Andy California, the Marty Kings. Hello. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's an active night tonight. It is. Uh, Power Slut is also playing. Where are they playing? 
Mm. I can't remember. Sorry. But they're playing. But there are some shows tonight. <laughs> mm-hmm. So if you need something oh. to do once you're done listening to Steve Me Alone. And allegedly you're could be Salty Greyhound featuring me sister and me on drums because we've been practicing the past two nights are allegedly playing a show tomorrow that's so low key they don't even know if it's actually going to happen. That's the show I want to go to. But then I told him if it doesn't happen, they should just come in and play on our very special secret tomorrow. Uh, uh. I wish I could tell you where that show is. We don't even know if it's happening. But I practiced with them just now. Well, Herb. Oh. Well, Kyle. Yes. Well, Tony. Tommy. Well, Matt Stearns. (laughs) I would like to thank all of you. For joining us tone, again tone. here on another tone, episode tone. of Steve Me Alone on WMF Radio. Please never Steve Me Alone. Keep fighting. Keep trying to make cool art things happen in your place where you're at. Find a way to do it. Maybe take over a, an old blockbuster video and sure. make a big, you know, get an army of people and just take it over. And I don't know. Maybe there's a better way, but... Try to think of some ways, people. Just, you know, I don't know. We can find a way. I'm telling you. Sounds like the voice of God, but he's very reasonable and laid back. Very, yeah. Uh, I'm just a... Uh, You're yeah. just going to just try me now, so I don't you? I don't claim to have answers for everything. Just try yeah. not to eat that fruit. Yeah, it's a bit forbidden. <laughs> Why not? Well, Take away your rib. Thank you all for being here for another episode of Steve Me Alone. We will see you soon enough. Stay strong. Stay strong and keep cool fighting. Cool whip. Cool whip. <laughs> Good night. He's going to go jump in cool whip.